you track symptoms in a real, re uh, a very real time way. When it comes to Omicron, are you picking up anything that can help us understand the symptoms of Omicron or indeed the severity of the virus? Yes, we have. Uh, so we have about a million regular users and they're reporting when they, they're told they have Omicron back to us in real time and we're picking up their symptoms. And uh, it, it's telling us really that uh, this is hitting people who've been double vaccinated, who've had boosters, uh, pretty much everybody. And uh, we're accumulating data really every day. And We've now got information on about 500 confirmed uh, Omicron cases that we're just starting to sort through. Um, but the early indications are that uh, the, we're seeing symptoms that are broadly in line with what we were seeing with the Delta variant, but just slightly milder, so that uh, most cases have what seems to be like a normal cold. Uh, it varies with some people. Some people will have fever. Um, but most people, it's just cold-like symptoms. They get fatigue, headaches, sore throats, runny nose, sneezing. Uh, and it's a minority who are getting any of the um, classic symptoms, the minority who get coughs, uh, fevers, or loss of smell or taste. So nothing, no new symptoms yet. Um, but it does seem to be hitting everybody regardless yeah. of uh, what their vaccine status is. But so, so far, uh, not hearing many reports of people needing hospital treatment or anything else at the moment. So from an individual point of view, it, it's a reassuring. But obviously, from a, a population countrywide uh, perspective, it, it's not good news because it's, it's so spreading like wildfire. Professor, then um, you don't see a difference, that much of a difference in terms of uh, vaccinated or unvaccinated um, with regards to those who get the infection. I'm wondering what kind of difference you see between those who are vaccinated and unvaccinated with regards to symptoms, or are those also similar? Well, so far we don't have many reports of people unvaccinated uh, because in the UK, 95% you know, of people aged over 55 are vaccinated anyway. So most people who are using our app are not, uh, they're all been vaccinated to some degree. So we expect that it will be more severe in the unvaccinated and uh, will be leading to hospital infections in that group. Um, so really what we're saying is we're just giving the, the data back on, on the majority of people. And in the UK, most adults are vaccinated and they're still expecting yeah. their mild uh, cold-like symptoms when they do get it. Talk to us, Tim, about the various tests in which people take and how accurate they are. We've got the airline industry today, yesterday, writing a letter to the Prime Minister saying it was too tough to have these PCR tests once again in place and making things just too challenging for that industry. But from a health perspective, how good is a lateral flow test versus a PCR, for example? Well, the challenge with uh, Omicron is that so the latency, the time between one infection and the other, is much more reduced, is quicker than with Delta. So... You really don't have much time to do it. By the time you've got the PCR test, uh, you could have got to reinfect it again. And so lateral flow tests mm. are our best protection against this. And getting a lateral flow test just before, uh, you know, certain, ideally within 12 hours of, say, flying or doing anything else like that is, is much more important uh, nowadays. And okay. We just have to accept that, that we need that speedy test. Uh, and, yeah, they're not perfect. But I think that's it's what's needed now is many more people doing okay. uh, lateral flow tests just before they get on planes, just before Tim. they go to major events, etc.